What's up, listeners? Welcome to the Highlight Basketball Podcast. My name is Dolos. The NBA season is here, and I have a special guest today to talk about the Charlotte Hornets. I've got Sam Dracula, Charlotte's <laughs> Hornet super fan, and it, I, I'm just going to let him take the floor and introduce himself. He, he does fantastic work on YouTube, and he does um, a fantastic Hornets podcast, um, and so he's got some. He's got a great co-host on that, so I'll let him <laughs> uh, take over that. Yeah, uh, first off, thanks for having me. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, my name is Sam Dracula, and uh, yeah, YouTube.com slash Sam. YouTube.com slash Sam Dracula is where my stuff is. My I make Hornets videos. I do live streams during Hornets games. So, you know, I can't show the game, you know, copyright rules mm -hmm. and that, but it's a watch party, you know, kick it with other Hornets fans or NBA fans, people who have money on the game, whatever, want to talk <laughs> about it as it's happening. It's a fun time. And then, yeah, I do a podcast with Raymond Felton, uh, 2005 fifth overall pick, 14-year NBA veteran, national champion at UNC, uh, former Bobcat, uh, played in the league as recently as 2019. So he's played with a lot of these guys. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's cool to get his perspective on things. Um, some of the best players in the league he's, please, he's played with and against. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we, we it's a weekly podcast, Believe in Hornets. Believe is spelled weird. It's B-L-E-A-V. But, um, yeah, every single week we talk Hornets basketball and news around the league. A uh, new episode just came out. right before I published it right before I joined you. So new episode's mm -hmm. out already. Yeah. Uh, talking about this offseason and uh, looking ahead to tonight and actual basketball because, man, this offseason sucked for a lot of reasons and i'm glad basketball is back definitely and, and all of the links to sam stuff like for the for the you this show will come out on youtube and and podcast so all the links to your stuff will definitely be be linked in the the episode for this so um everyone listening watching should definitely go check sam out um bef before you had raymond felton i believe you had mugsy Bogues as as the co-host was am i right on that correct yeah so yeah the uh the podcast started in december 2020 and the network um the believe network they have team specific podcasts for everything for every franchise for like every like major college um so whatever you're into like if you're like a fan of the cowboys as a cowboys one you know if like the packers mm -hmm. there's a packers one and it's the same kind of setup they have a content creator who does like the hosting and editing and publishing and then they have a former player who's like you know the expert on the show mm -hmm. and so yeah initially they it was me and mugsy um we 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 did the first year together basically the metal's rookie year and then, uh, you know, the world started opening up again at that point. And uh, Mosey had other stuff to do, which is fine. <laughs> no, no, zero hard feelings. I got a side. He, this is a gift, but oh, wow. not from Muggsy, but uh, from somebody else. But yeah, no hard feelings, obviously. Muggsy's the coolest dude on the planet. It was a pleasure doing a podcast with him. But yeah, so he left to, to pursue other stuff. And then um, I was doing the podcast alone for a good, a good while. And then uh, the podcast linked me up. Uh, the network linked me up with uh, Raymond Felton. Who, which is crazy because he's uh he was an icon of mine mm -hmm. um growing up as well like that 05 unc team was a pleasure like was so was so dope mm -hmm. and uh, i'm from illinois and they beat illinois in st louis uh where i'm from it was, they broke the whole state's art it was incredible so like to go full circle to be able to do a podcast with him is nuts but he's awesome um ton of insight and uh yeah going from one point guard to another things you'd love to see you know yeah, and that's why I was especially glad to get you on the show. Like the insight that you're able to get, like talking to to actual former Hornets. So I, I want to stress this: everyone listening, watching, make sure you check out and subscribe to Sam. Um, yeah. But let's just start diving into talking about this this Hornet season. We're recording before the uh, season opener, um, so I no no real clue what's going to end up happening in this game. Uh, this episode is probably going to be published um, after the game. So uh, it's going to come out tomorrow. Um, so we're just going to take some guesses about what, what happens tonight. We know LaMelo's not playing. Mm -hmm. um, he's on the injury list. I don't know if you, you have a, a, if you've heard like a timeline for when he could be returning. I, I, I tried to look that up. Um, yeah. There's an injury so, update on him. Yeah. Ankle strains are weird. Mm -hmm. um, it's like somewhere between one to three weeks typically. So conservatively, the first five games of the season, you know, could be sooner, could be later. But I, I think it was pretty clear that he was going to miss tonight's game. And yeah. probably up until – so they got San Antonio tonight, New Orleans, Atlanta, New York, and then Orlando. So maybe after that. Maybe – or at the tail end of that. Shouldn't be too bad. <laughs> Shouldn't yeah. be. Knock on wood. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, starting out against San Antonio, that's a team that will – 
definitively be tanking. So oh, hopefully, sure. yeah, hopefully that's a that's a Hornets dub. We're, we're going to get into some of the tanking conversations <laughs> for Charlotte. So depending on where you feel, maybe you're, you're hoping for a, a loss tonight for, for Charlotte. But uh, what are your predictions as, as far as tonight's game, leading scores for, for Charlotte, um, and general thoughts on, on the roster a bit? So I think I think um, for for tonight I think the Hornets, the Hornets should they, they'll beat the Spurs. There's no way they beat <laughs> like the Spurs are not trying to win games. Yeah, uh, like they they gave away Dejounte Murray two years before they had to. <laughs> they made it very clear. Yeah. Like, oh, you're an All Star. God, see ya. Like, we're not yeah. trying to have this in our in our in our on our franchise. Um, yes, and I I imagine guys like Terry and Gordon Hayward, especially Hayward, I think has something to prove. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, given given his injury history, so I expect Hayward and Terry to have big games. Uh, Terry's gonna play. Terry's gonna be the point guard. Uh, he's not a point guard. He's the size of a point guard, but he's not a point guard. But he's gonna be playing that position while Lamelo's out, and so maybe we see him take a lesser role from a scoring point of view. And guys like Hay- uh, a Hayward, a PJ, uh, Washington steps up from a more scoring point of view, but. Um, but who knows? It could be one of those games where Kelly Oubre decides to go like seven of nine from three. Uh, mm-hmm. versus the games where he goes one of one of thirteen from three, uh, catch a good Ubre game. Oh, could, yeah. like, that could be one of them as well. Like any at any given night, Ubre can go off. It's pretty annoying. I can't lie. <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah, I think this is one of my favorite things about like the Hornets. And you know, I'm I'm probably one of those people that really started paying more attention after they drafted Lamelo. Yeah. But I, I think something they really benefited from, they made some smart roster decisions to not just let it be the Lamelo show all the time. Having Terry Rozier and Gordon Hayward as other scorers to take the burden off of LaMelo was something that I think has really helped since his rookie year. Uh, for example, I, I think of another guy who I'm, I'm fairly high on, R.J. Barrett, yeah. um, and the environment that he came into is, is a high pick. I think they were like both both a third pick, if I'm not wrong. Yeah. And, and like the environment that they go into is completely different. LaMelo's able to play alongside Gordon Hayward, Terry Rozier, guys who can space the floor for him, whereas R.J. Barrett is alongside Julius Randle. Um, there's some clunky fit, uh, there's spacing issues. And so, you know, the mellow has just a better infrastructure around him to, to perform. And I think that the, the space that he gets from it allows him to drive better, um, opens up things from a passing, uh, perspective. Um, so I, I really do like, like the roster and Charlotte got a lot of hate for that initial signing of Hayward, uh, mm-hmm. for the contract. And I even pointed out that like, when you think about it, they, they're kind of paying him like 40 million um, because they had to waive Batum. Oh. And yeah, so last his, year, Batum. This yeah, last, last year, Batum. This is, this is the yeah. last year, Batum. <laughs> yeah, so like, yeah, he's finally going to be off the books. But like there was that like extra <laughs> salary involved yeah. in bringing Hayward here, which drew a lot of criticism. But the infrastructure he provided ends up ended up being helpful uh, for the times he could be on the court, <laughs> that is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of what they're building, but they, They've run into some issues this offseason. Um, yeah. And, like, I probably shouldn't joke about it, but I've, I've been jokingly calling them, like, the the Portland Jailblazers 2.0 yeah. just based off of this offseason. Like, to to recap, uh, Montrezl Harrell, I mean, who's, he's no longer with the team, but it, it just wasn't a good look, the whole felony possession thing that happened over the offseason with him, especially uh, combined with the fact that, Miles Bridges, uh, his whole situation, restricted free agent. And, you know, we got the news of of, uh, his court case going on. And that isn't even settled. So one of the best players on the Hornets roster from from last year is now just not on the team. And we're we're not even we're not even really sure if he's going to be in the league moving forward. Um, And so for the Hornets, they pretty much just got to operate like Miles won't be there. Mm -hmm. Um, And that's a huge hit. And this week, we also got the news. James Booknight um, uh, in his arrest. I, I saw more details this morning, and that story is just kind of nuts. Like the whole that picture. You see the, the picture? The, yeah, the DUI. He was found sleeping in his car with a with a Glock and Doritos in in his hand. Like that is. Ugh. I kind of need the the whole story on that. Like the the press conference. He's going to need to give us some some details. What led him to being like passed out drunk in the car with a Glock and some Doritos in his hand? Like that's <laughs> completely absurd. You gotta, you gotta snack, man. You gotta yeah, get I, the calories up. Hey, I, I get I get it from this. I get the Doritos. I'm confused yeah. about the Glock. So yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not a great off season to have like that much off court drama with your mm-hmm. team. Uh, and so 
it immediately makes me think back to that that jailblazers team and just from a perception standpoint the front office wanted to move a lot of those guys just because of the the off-court headache that that kind of uh, it created um and so i'm just curious your thoughts on like the the culture in charlotte um if there's anything that needs to be adjusted players that need to be moved on from in your opinion or has this just kind of been some fluke off season where guys made bad decisions so it's the the off season was cursed i i think with with kenny atkinson i think that, oh, yeah. that's the start of it mm-hmm. um i may be messing up the timeline but um atkinson saying yes and then saying no mm-hmm. really that's that's embarrassing yeah. It is because there are all these stories um, about why, you know, he said he, he didn't want to uproot his family. He had like kids in high school or something like that. He didn't want to move cross country, which is fair. But why'd you say yes? You know what I mean? Also, some of those reports were saying that, you know, the, he, the Hornets were a little stingy when it came to his staff. Mm-hmm. The Hornets didn't want to pony up for new assistant coaches when they already had coaches from the James Brego era. Um, so that's just not a good look. Right. Um, point is coming off as cheap. That plus um, you know, Steve Clifford coming back. Mm-hmm. Now he's not cheap. The Hornets did not cheap out on Clifford. He's making like four million a year. Like that's a that's a legit, that's a that's a, that's legit money. Um, and you know, also like they're flirting with um, I think Mike D'Antoni got got two interviews. Like he did didn't get a they uh they chose uh, Atkinson over D'Antoni, and then the stories came out about the them being a little, little cheap on the assistant coaches. And I'm like, there's no way D'Antoni is cheap either. <laughs> like yeah. he's, he, he, there's, there's no way he's coming in for, for, for uh, anything less than a bag. So, you know, that was never happening. So they land with Clifford. Who's fine. I think Clifford is actually the perfect coach for the Hornets. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just sucks. It's just boring. Like it's not exciting, True. but what he brings defensively and from a game management point of view, I think the Hornets really need that. It's just boring. Um, so I'm, I'm hopeful with him, but yeah, the, the players, Trez, it's a lot of weed. I have no issue with these guys yeah. having like having weed on it, but three pounds is a lot of weed. Like that's a lot, man. Right? Uh, you got to move smarter than that. And I think it wasn't a surprise that he left. Like he's gonna chase rings. Like his departure, I don't think had anything to do with um with that. As soon as that those charges got uh, reduced, he signed with the Sixers. Like that, he tweeted out, "Thank you, Charlotte." That day, and the next day he was with the Sixers, and that makes more sense. Reunited with Doc, Daryl Morey, the whole like. Houston Rockets gang is reunited in Philly. So and I'm really happy for him that he's there and that his charges got reduced. Um, but yeah, with Bridges, with Book Knight, Bridges is meant to be the, like, a, the, he's a team leader. He's the leader of this team. Uh, he's a verbal and verbal leader of this team. And one of the things about uh, the pandemic era of uh, two seasons ago, when the season started with no fans in the building, you could hear everything, right? Mm-hmm. Bridges was loud and talking to everybody. Um, and that was going into his third year. And so like, you kind of, and then when, uh, when the fans came back, I was at that game, you had Hayward, Terry, LaMelo all on the team, right? Miles Bridges was the guy with the microphone welcoming fans back. Like he was the guy on this team. Um, and for the, him to, to put out the lean picture, the pink lemonade picture. And then the. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, the awful stuff he's accused of, um, it's, it's a, it's a shock. Mm-hmm. And because of like, because of everything I said, like, I, I think everyone, cause also, also, this is a good thing. Uh, cup check got extended. I'm a fan of that. Mm-hmm. So his, his, his deal was coming to an end. He's going to be around for, he's had a multi-year deal. So Clifford and everyone else involved in the front office, I think they have a free pass this year, yeah. uh, given, the bridges stuff because he's such a key piece. He's sec- easily the second best player on the team, maybe the most important player on the team when you can factor in the intangibles. Um, and that, I think that's I, I, that's not to you know denigrate Lamelo at all, but like he's not a lead. He's not. He's not. He hasn't been a leader on this team. Bridges mm-hmm. has been, and what he brings defensively and his, his upward trajectory. You can know, extrapolate his career out, seeing what he did one from year one to two to two to three to three to four, and year five bridges could have been really something special. But what he's accused of is 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 too, is too dark, and yeah. there's a reason no team in league has gone after him, um, and his court case has been extended for or uh, delayed for a seventh time. It's 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 weird, man. It's weird. So, book night. When you're talking about players that should be moved, 
before this, I was a fan of movement book night anyway. I don't mm-hmm. I don't see it. I don't see it with him. Um haven't seen a lot of it. You know, when he played last year, I thought he when he got extended run, he's shown the ability to put up points, like significant points in the league. But he just doesn't have it from a ball handling point of view. And at his size, like I need him to be a combo guard. Mm-hmm. And I just don't see him creating for himself and others at a high level yet. But because we didn't see him, he had a mysterious pinky injury in summer league. Missed mm-hmm. that. And then preseason, he had one good quarter in preseason. The last quarter of this last game in preseason. He had a great quarter. I was like, oh man, this is this is the book night we've been trying to see, you know, and hopefully that built momentum. And he, as far as I know, he's not sus- he's not suspended. Then he'll be with the team, so maybe get some run in San Antonio tonight and see see what he can do. But he has a lot of other things to worry about now, right? People are talking about him like they've never talked about him before. Bringing up, I had no idea he had all these like these traffic violations, these speeding, uh, reckless driving charges pending as well. Like, there's a lot going on with Book Night that I didn't even consider because we saw. He had the issue with James Brego last year too, threw his like warm-up pants at him. He got kicked out of a UConn game. Like all oh, these like weird things. Like there's a lot of all this stuff. There's more stuff off the court than on the court with him. And when you're in your second year in the league, 11th overall pick, that's a that's the wrong balance. That's the wrong balance. So I'm hopeful he could bring something to this roster, but I, I just don't see it. And then when he bring in all the off court stuff, it's like, is it even worth it? Yeah. Yeah. And like the thing with Book Knight is it, it's really sad because like he was such a a highly touted talent coming into the draft. Like there was some speculation he may sneak into that top five, maybe yeah. be like the sixth or seventh pick. So I thought it was a steal at eleven. Yeah, when, we yeah, got when the Hornets landed, I'm like, oh man, like they they really came out on top of this draft because like I'm pretty high on Kai Jones as well, who they landed in that draft. So getting both of those guys with, you know, like mid, uh, you know, no, Book Knight was a lottery pick, but Kai Jones was he was like twenty or something, right? So yeah, like, like I think nineteen. Something like that. But yeah. yeah. And they yeah, tra- yeah. they traded a first round pick to get him, to get mm-hmm. back into the draft to get him. Yeah. Ugh. Like, I th- I thought there were real winners of that draft. And so to mm-hmm. now be sitting in a situation where it's like, it, it feels a little Kevin Porter Jr. in Cleveland, where, yeah. you know, like the off court things just, they, they may need to move him. Um, But I, I guess we'll see. Like, it's it, this is something where it's like, I really hate to speculate on it because it the only thing that matters is how the Charlotte front office, how the Charlotte coaching staff, has their perspective of book night changed from these incidents um because like i don't really like to judge players for the off-court stuff especially when it's like not anything like like super super serious like the miles bridges thing i think that's something that we can all like the, the accusations in that is are, are those are horrendous so yeah you know yeah but with trez like whatever like I, I don't care too much about this the fact that it's piling up with book night is probably where it's like th- yeah. that's going to be a, somewhat of a headache uh, for the front office to deal with. Cause I think he even had a, like a, a DUI situation back in college. So yeah. clearly some personal demons that, you know, hopefully he gets some help battling. Um, it just, it just might not be in, in Charlotte for him. Yeah. Um, and to his credit, he, he, after practice yesterday, he apologized for being a distraction leading mm-hmm. into the regular season. So he is, he is aware of what mm-hmm. he did and the stakes at, at play here. So th- just to his credit. And the Hornets haven't really said much other than they're looking into it. So yeah, yeah. we'll see. But for Hornets fans, it's it's very similar to Malik Monk. Mm-hmm. Like, I think they were drafted 11th overall too. play the same position, didn't play at all early in their careers. Both had legal issues. Um, Malik's figured out, like, I'm really rooting for him. I've, I've been, I love Malik Monk. Man. I love Malik Monk so much. I'm really sad that he left Charlotte for nothing. He just walked to, to L.A., when and the Hornets got nothing back, like I, I, I that, that's a real bummer. But I, I'm, I'm a LA, I'm a Laker fan, so I, I loved him too. So <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a killer, man. He's he's really dope, and uh, I I could see you know there's a scenario where you know the Hornets have a team option on him next year. Mm-hmm. I can see them not picking that up and letting him walk, or um, if not next year, the year after, it's like oh, listen, mm-hmm. we're just gonna cut ties because he has no trade value, right? He's yeah. all he has is that left overall pick. There hasn't been we haven't seen it on the floor. There's there's not enough evidence on the floor to make it worth trading for him, mm-hmm. unless something happens this season. He could be he could ball out this year and then raise the whole thing up and maybe he gets an extension. But I just it 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 seems like he's it, this is gonna play out like Malik Monk and he's gonna leave at the end of the year with no offer, no qualifying offer. Just see ya. With that kind of grim reality for this season, the question's been asked a lot: Should the Hornets just you know throw it all into tank? Uh, try and get Scoot Henderson, try and get Victor Wembanyama, 
because as as good as LaMelo is, I don't think there's another like all-star cornerstone piece of this this franchise to really pair with him going forward. And that's what a lot of these other really young cores have. They yeah. have they have multiple guys. And so should Charlotte take another shot getting high, you know, high in the lottery? I think that's a valid question. Um, I you already did a video for, uh, about that on your YouTube channel, so people mm-hmm. can definitely go check it out for more more insight and like more in depth uh, thoughts. But you you said yeah, you kind of are are with it that you think the the Hornets should be tanking this season. Um, you want to just kind of give us some, some more of your your thoughts on on why? Yeah, so I think there's a there's a strong scenario where the Hornets will unintentionally tank this year. I don't think they'll be very good. Um, yeah. if Hayward Hayward has to play 70 plus games, like genuinely, for this mm-hmm. team to have a chance at being in the play. I think they have zero chance of getting in the top six. The East is too nuts. It's too mm-hmm. crazy, the Eastern Conference. And so they're they're in the six to ten range or seven to ten range, excuse me. And when I look at the Knicks, the Wizards, and maybe the Magic, I think two of those teams, one of those teams could not or could like knock the Hornets out of the top ten. I think there's a chance the Bulls fall out of the top 10. So maybe there's some leeway there for the Hornets. But I just don't see it. I just don't see it. Uh, like, his history is not on Hayward's side when it comes to injuries. Mm-hmm. And if he's not there, I I like some of these young players, but I, I just don't – the roster just doesn't have it to compete with this, this crazy Eastern Conference. So with that being said, all, well, so there's that, right? Also, the cap sucks. Like, the cap situation for the Hornets is tough. Mm-hmm. And if there's opportunity to gain some cap relief while also improving your draft position, I think the Hornets should do it. You know, if they have two expiring contracts with Plumley and Ubre, if there's a situation where a contender needs some depth, they have an injury, you can flip, you can do a player for player and get a pick back. You can go all in and do the Russell Westbrook deal, Terry and Hayward. Those, the contracts match up. Maybe you put Plumley in there too. I don't know. Uh, the Pacers have a better deal on the table. Like they can do healed mm-hmm. and Turner. That's a better deal for the Lakers. Uh, you, I mean, you, I'm sure you'd yeah. rather have healed and, and Turner. Than, yeah, yeah, especially because <laughs> Hayward's like injury concerns. That's gonna yeah. bring like the, the plus positionally down Turner game. makes more sense, right? Because then yeah. AD doesn't have to play center. Like it, it the, the Hornets have to be quick to do it because yeah. I think Russ is going to want out of there um, sooner rather than later. But that's what I mean. Like there, I think I just don't see it. I don't see a, a path for them in the play-in and it seems stupid to be in that this mm-hmm. year um with with everyone unanimously saying that when Benyama, if not he's either the best prospect since lebron or the best prospect ever and a prospect's a yeah. prospect he could s- step on a, a rock and and shatter his leg tomorrow who knows but to have that chance to get a generational guy even if it's slim chance even though you know 14 percent chance to win the lottery if you're the worst mm-hmm. team or the top three or bottom three teams why not, man? Why not? Because everyone's going to have a free pass because of the Bridges stuff. Mm-hmm. Clifford's not getting fired. He just got hired. Yep. MJ's not firing Kupchak. That's his guy. That's his UNC guy. And he just got an extension. Like Extending one of the circumstances should allow for a tanking year. And I think the Hornets fans, the hardcore Hornets fans will understand and the casual Hornets fans will understand if this team... And honestly, too, this team has too many guys. Like, too many, like question mark guys yeah. like the depth isn't really there like i want to know who what jt thor is what kai jones is what james book Knight is you know like give these guys extend a run see what they offer so you figure out who you can build around who you can't build around so i'm i'm fully back the tank i say that as someone who is doing a weekly podcast on the hornets who is stream who streams during these games i'm willing to suffer through it for the greater good mm. so um that that's that's where i'm at it's it's the long game you know, um, I, I'm I'm here for it, man. Yeah, like you point out, like there are some young guys that they've picked up in the in the first round that are buried on the bench right now behind the veterans, and it would really benefit Charlotte to to see what they have in those players. Um, and, and this was would be the perfect year, just like you broke it down. Like, there's not going to be a lot of attention on the coach if there's a a bad win loss record here. Um, my only thing about like this whole question of should the Hornets tank is the owner is Michael Jordan. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I doubt that's going to be something he's looking to do yeah. on top of the fact that, you know, you just hired Steve Clifford. I doubt he's somebody who's going to want to actively lose games. And, you know, he's been someone that's generally resistant to play the young guys. So, you know, yeah. 
you really might have to trade the veterans in order to to force his hand there. Um, who do you think is the most likely to be traded this season? Um, I would say one of the extent the uh, expiring guys, Ubre Plumley. Like Ubre, mm-hmm. Ubre doesn't need to be on this team. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to have Kelly Ubre on this team. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's a he's a wing that a lot of teams could use. Um, a contender could use him in their bench rotation for sure. And I just, I just don't want to see, see what it brings to the table. And all, honestly, he just takes away minutes from JT Thor, um, from Bryce McGowan's a second round pick, from Jalen McDaniels, from Cody Martin. Like, there are these guys that have been in the system mm-hmm. who have like a, a block, right? Hayward's availability is going to be a question mark. So he may be available, he may not be, depending on his health, right? And that's why I don't think he gets traded, plus his contract's too crazy. I think Ubre just makes the most sense to, to flip for something, even if it's a second round pick, just to get them off the books and just yeah. f- free up um, some, some range for the younger wings to get some run. Yeah. Speaking of freeing up some money, uh, I noticed there was an ex- a rookie extension that didn't get done um, yeah. for the Hornets. Uh, PJ, what, what are your thoughts on his future with the team now that, you know, we know for a fact he's going to be going into restricted free agency? Uh, so I love PJ. I'm a big, big fan of PJ Washington. Um, I start when I started my channel, it was that off season when they drafted him I and mean, when they traded, did the sign and trade for Rozier and Kemba mm-hmm. and they drafted PJ and PJ came in, hit seven threes in his first NBA game. And I was like, hell yeah, let's go, baby. Like I'm mm-hmm. here for this. And, um, ever since, you know, they've used him in every way, Matt, like, so fresh, freshman year, rookie year starter, unquestionably the starter, the, the team was just going through a rebuild. You know, they went youth, like Dwayne Bacon was starting for them. Like, they were just going through it. And then second year, they had him play center. They're like, are we going small? PJ learned a new position. Third year, put him off the bench. Miles Bridges emerged, you know, that because uh, PJ's second year was LaMelo's first year. And that was the year where LaMelo started the year on the bench and Miles Bridges was on the bench. And they came in like halfway through the first quarter and just like took the world over, um, just tossing lobs left and right. And so, uh, so PJ was a uh, was sacrificed for that. Basically, went went to the bench to give uh, Bridges more minutes, deservedly so at the time. But now, looking at PJ is going to be the starting power forward again, and which is good. I think he's more than capable of doing it. I think he could be the Hornets' version of Al Horford, being that tough, uh, two way big that can stretch the floor. Um, and I think he can play a long time in this. I think he'd have like a 10, 12, 13 year career. PJ Washington doing just that. Um, even though he's a little shorter than Horford. Um, and I think, you know, I know, I know there's, you know, the cap's gonna go up at some point. So the cap number is weird, but I could see him making signing like a four year, somewhere like somewhere like 18, 19, 20, 21, something like in that range per Agreed. season. I think that'd be good value and fair for him, for a guy yeah. in his skill set, unless he goes nuts. I mean, somebody's gonna have to put numbers on the like, you know, there's this old like mm-hmm. good stats, bad team thing, like. Someone's gonna put up put up numbers this year. It probably, I think Terry will probably be the leading scorer unless the mellow goes nuts. Um, but PJ, I think he's gonna have a very good year. And I think he sticks around. The Hornets can't afford to get rid of him. He's by far the best at his position on the team. And he offers too much. He fits like the NBA meta. And you those guys, there are not a lot of those guys is available because everyone needs bigs that can switch mm-hmm. and shoot and defend. Like it's just it's it's the perfect blend. Yeah, I was actually co- I don't know if I'm, I was surprised he didn't get extended, but, you know, I definitely thought it would have been in the Hornets' best interest to just get him on an extension and, and not even risk the restricted free agency. Yeah. I, I guess, you know, depending on whatever that contract uh, would be for the extension, but an, another we'll, we'll see uh, piece for them. Speaking of LaMelo, I, I, I kind of want to talk through what you think his his ceiling is as a player, as a scorer, facilitator, and, and overall franchise cornerstone. Yeah, uh, so I think if um my biggest thing with Lamelo is is to to decision make. Well, it's the same thing really, decision making mm-hmm. um, from a shot selection and from a uh, aggression. I guess good way to kind of categorize it because offensively, I think he's not using his size to his advantage. He's a walking mismatch. He's a six seven point guard. Mm-hmm. that's not you know he doesn't be backing that guys down in the post but if he if he develops like a like a like a kobe turnaround jumper when he has a smaller defender on him 
I think I think that will add an incredible amount of diversity to his game. Getting to the rim, getting to more, getting to the free throw line more, things like that will will bring his um his averages up across the board and just improve his efficiency. You know, uh, draw more double teams, and then on the defensive end, when it comes to aggression, he t- he picks up a lot of silly fouls. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he's like top eight in the league last year in fouls per game. Like that's not when that's your point guard. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. You got to be available. You got to be on the floor um, in late game situations. We can't lose you because you're in foul to pick up two or three fouls in the first half. Like we, this team needs him available. So if you and that will come in it with experience and age, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not. It's not a concern. It's just something that he'll work yeah. on um, as he as he continues in the league. Um, but his upside. He can be an all NBA player. Like he's, I think he'll average 27 and seven his entire career. Um, when he's able to improve his efficiency, um, like in the lane, like with, for two, with two pointers, you know, um, he can, I think he could be a 27, seven, seven guy in the league, if not better. I think he has a ton of potential and I'm excited to see where he goes. Um, like where his, where his career goes. Cause I, I'm a big fan of LaMelo and, uh, Hornets are, Hornets are lucky to have him, honestly. They, they had no business being mm-hmm. there when they drafted him third. Uh, I think they were supposed to have, like, the eighth or ninth pick that year. Oh, yeah. And so it was, a, it was a lucky night on draft night, on lottery night, excuse me. And they, you know, Anthony Edwards is pretty good. <laughs> like, really, mm-hmm. like, he's really nice. Agreed. Um, But they were lucky, you know, that LaMelo was there. And Golden State maybe kicking themselves a little bit with Wiseman. True. Very true there on that point. Uh, my my brother is still a huge huge Wiseman guy because he's he's a Warriors fan. But yeah, yeah I think I think Lamelo is going to be fantastic. Um, I think you hit on it. I, defense might be like yeah. the area I think about most with him because just from a scheme perspective, he almost like the Hornets almost needed to be running zone like all the time when he was on the court just because he was he was a turnstile at the point of attack. Like he's he's letting guys get past them way too often and. Uh, that that that's like the biggest area of improvement for him defensively um in my opinion he, he needs to do a better job like being competitive not letting guys get past them it's going to happen with the with the quicker guards they're they're going to mm-hmm. get them uh in and attack that top foot a lot of the times i feel but with guys his size i, I think he, sh- he needs to do a better job containing at the point of attack um and, and even like in zone i think he when they put him in zone there are moments where i think it genuinely does look good like I think he can be a, a valuable off ball defender. Uh, I like his instincts uh, in the passing lanes. Like you said, he fouls too much. So he definitely does like risk it a lot of the times. And that yeah. will also put him out of position, which is a big defensive problem. Um, but like with experience, he'll, he'll understand the moments where he should make that risk more often. So I, I think that'll die down as his, as his career goes on. But outside of Lamelo, who like who are your your favorite prospects currently on the roster? So, would you say like a how would you what would you what's the cutoff for a prospect? What would you say like second year, like first and second year players or? Yeah, yeah, first and second year players. Okay, um, so it's a it's a tie. It's a two way tie with a uh, JT Thor and Mark Williams. So with Thor. He's by far the best prospect, <laughs> which sucks to say out loud because I think it's the reality we're in from that draft class. The Hornets, two drafts ago, Book Knight, Kai Jones, JT Thor, and Scotty Lewis from Florida. Um, Scotty Lewis broke his leg right before summer league. Uh, you know, I I don't that's that which just sucks. I just feel for him. Uh, so he's not in the plans, obviously. And we talked about Book Knight, Kai Jones. Uh, he has a ton of upside, but I I, I don't see it. I don't see it. JT Thor looks ready to go right now. He has the NBA frame. He's a willing and capable defender. And he can shoot the ball. Uh like he has an NBA body at 19. He looks like he's 40. I, I'm I'm so I'm I'm all in on JT Thor. I love JT Thor. And I think Steve Clifford's gonna really like him too. That's another reason why I want oh, I'd like them to move mm-hmm. Ubre to make room for JT Thor, who can play mo- like multiple wing positions and in the front court a little bit. Um but Mark Williams, he has the frame, like an unbelievable frame to be an incredible rim protector. Uh, he says he wants to be Rob Williams, like super switchable, mm-hmm. uh, excellent on the help side. And he has a, a better frame than him. There's a nine foot nine standing reach. That's insane. Like that's actually insane. Seven, seven wingspan. Um, 
I just it's just too. I say JT Thor first, just because Williams hasn't played an NBA game yet. Because uh, JT off rip looked like he belonged and looked comfortable out there. Mark Williams through summer league and preseason, I can't say that. I don't have the same like, I don't see the same comfort comfortability that I saw with JT mm-hmm. at the same point. But that will come. Uh, but Williams, when he starts using his size to his advantage, because I think he looks real tentative around the rim. Like, man, you're so- mm-hmm. you can dunk without jumping. Just please, man, go up strong with two hands and uh, assert your authority. I just haven't seen that from Williams yet. But JT Thor, I think, is the one to watch out for. Um, I think it'll be the the gem of that draft class for the Hornets and the developmental system overall. Because we've seen uh, Jalen McDaniels emerge through that system. He's, mm-hmm. I think he's a, a very nice role player in the league. Could be something even better as he continues to develop. Cody Martin, same thing. Guys who were second round picks that went through the G League system and now are role players at the NBA level. I see JT Thor along the same, the same kind of track, same uh, development. Okay, and, and so wrapping this up a little bit, um, Steve Clifford. We're, we're here again, <laughs> Steve Clifford, the mm-hmm. remix. So <laughs> you you already kind of talked about it. The whole Atkinson thing was was an awkward way of getting here. But yeah. ultimately, it's, it seems like it's going to be a solid hire. Their biggest area of improvement just as a team was going to be defensively. And at least you're bringing in a guy with a defensive mindset um, who's going to start by thinking of ways to adjust the scheme, get them defending better, get yep. them playing with more effort. Um, and so we've already touched on a, a little bit like your, your expectations for him. But like, what are your thoughts for the defensive scheme that the Hornets will be running this year? Um. I, I don't know. I can't, I don't know what they're going to ro- roll out uh, from a scheme point of view, but I know they'll be bought in. They have to be because Clifford's going to be yelling at them. Clifford was, he was yelling his ass off during preseason, man. He was standing at half court, barking out call outs um, in the half court. And I don't remember hearing Brago do that at all while, while he was here. You know, he's calling out blitzes. He was calling out help side stuff. Like he's, he's, he's vocal. He's coaching his ass off on the defensive end. And he seems to be committed to maintaining the same like volatility on offense, mm-hmm. um, which I'm here for because that's like the only entertainment we'll have this year. <laughs> this yeah. team playing fast, up, up, up paced uh, uh, basketball offensively, but yeah, I mean, I, I, I hope to see some some more blitzing. We saw some of that um, in the preseason, uh, forcing the other team to make passes because this team, this Hornets team, has like so, has really good athletes on it, uh, cool. guys that are tall have really nice wingspans that can cause some massive matchup issues for the other team if um, they're out there at the right time. So I'm I'm hopeful for it. I'm excited to see what they do tonight. Um, but yeah, uh, I, Clifford has the resume. Um, I think he'll make these guys play some like actual defense. So hopefully some more man-to-man as well because we got cooked on the zone last year because no, so, dudes it was a three-point contest when they're playing the hornet people were playing the hornets last year yeah so. yeah that's true <laughs> okay so we've talked about the defense we've talked about the offense and we we did generally kind of give some predictions for what the hornet season ends up being um but i just kind of want to do like one last lightning round of 2023 hornets predictions okay. um so. if if you have like anything in mind for like as far as like statistical uh, achievements for, for guys on the Hornets, um, any, you know, we've already speculated about some future trade things. If you have like mm-hmm. a standing or a record prediction for them, just what are your overall kind of last thoughts on them? Okay. Um, yeah. I think, I think the season ends with the Hornets like 11th or 12th in the East. They can't, I mean, they're not going to, they can't bottom out and they're, they're, they're too good to bottom out. Mm-hmm. Plus, I think the like I think the Pistons and Pacers can be way worse than them. But uh, yeah, man. Um, I could see Lamelo in the All Star game again. I could see uh Terry being the leading scorer on the team. Um, I'm hopeful. I think Hayward's due. <laughs> He's due to play sixty to seventy games this year. Um, I, I'm I'm choosing to believe that's going to happen, and so. Yeah, I, I think he'll play a lot of a lot more games than he did last year. And because, like, man, like, if, you know, the Hornets got embarrassed two years in a row in the play-in, mm-hmm. that doesn't happen if Hayward's there. It wasn't there. He wasn't available in those games. So uh, he's a key piece to what they have going on here uh, for a lot of reasons. So um, I think Mason Plumlee is going to start the year as the starting center. Um, I think he's going to 
either get shipped out of town or drop into the rotation to offer more minutes to either Nick Richards or um, Mark Williams. Like I think Nick Richards, um, it was is my was my he's my favorite player from um, from a preseason. I think he showed a ton from summer league preseason, and for being a second round pick, looks like another like decent rotation guy the Hornets have found in the second round. Mm -hmm. um, and I think you know he's not gonna he's not gonna be exciting to watch. He isn't, but he doesn't need to be as a backup center and potentially a serviceable like stopgap center. You know, from a rebounding point of view, from a dunking point of view, and from somewhat defensively he's not gonna like you know he's not Matumbo or anything like that but he's gonna offer something as a legit seven footer he's gonna offer something nice on the defensive end so I'm excited to see what Nick Richards brings I'm high five hopes for him but uh it, it's gonna be a rough year it's gonna be a rough year for the Hornets um I hope I'm wrong like mm -hmm. I really hope I'm wrong like if this Hornets ends up this team ends up being a six seed I'll be, I'll be gassed I'll be so happy <laughs> but I can't lie if they end up as a in the playing again I don't be, I'm not going to like it. Yeah. I'm not going to like it. It's not the year to be a middle of the pack team. It just isn't. And I know the lottery is a crapshoot, but you got to be in the mix. And, you know, also the Hornets, their pick is top 16 protected. So, you know, they're, they're bad. They'll keep it. You know, mm -hmm. it'll be protected for another, another two years too. Lottery protected, but they also have the Nuggets pick, uh, which will be, it's, it, that's lottery protected too. So the Hornets will have that pick. Uh, there's no way the Nuggets aren't awesome this year. So mm -hmm. uh, Hornets may have, will, li will likely have two first round picks this year. That's something they could dip into if they want to get involved with trades or dump salary, like, and do a full tank <laughs> where then, where you package mm -hmm. picks and contracts to get rid of guys that could be in play for the Hornets as well. I didn't have to talk about that in the video, but that that's something like the OKC method where you're like, Hey man, just take our salaries and here's some picks for it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, on the trade front, I, I had one that that's come to mind while we've been recording, um, and that's like essentially bringing in Jackson Hayes. You could uh, probably ship out Plumlee, maybe Ubre in this as well, and bring mm -hmm. in Jackson Hayes. He's a, kind of a stopgap piece at, at center. See what you see what the Hornets think of him if they decide to. I think he's also going to be a restricted free agent if if they yeah. uh like what he shows. It could be kind of a, a similar situation to. <clears throat> the Pistons with Bagley last year, they, mm. they brought him in, they liked him and, and they retained him. Um, and Jackson Hayes is someone who, who has experience at the five, but last year he played a lot at the four alongside another big man in, in Jonas Valanciunas. So I think yeah. that would be a really interesting one uh, to have like them bring in. Um, it, he, he would be funny because he has his own, he had his own issues with the yeah. law too. <laughs> yeah. So we want to embrace the, uh, the whole, the whole Joe Blitches thing. That'd be, yeah. That could be the move. I like his jumper though. He, I like mm -hmm. that Pelicans team's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, I, I'm rooting for that Pelicans team, even though it's kind of sacrilege because of what happened in Charlotte with Charlotte and the Hornets in New Orleans. But yeah. uh, I'm rooting for that team. Yeah, that, that that's a that's a fun Pelicans. Team. I, I might have to find like a, a guest to to talk about the Pelicans here uh, in an upcoming episode. But yeah, that that's gonna be one of my predictions as far as the tanking thing. I think it all really like Gordon Hayward's health. It yeah. is going to be the crux of all of this because if he goes down with an injury, it's it's so much easier to sell, just tearing it down. You know, we're gonna get Gordon back next year, and then and then we'll compete, and they can at least sell it to like the front office, the fans, mm -hmm. ownership as, hey, Hayward's out. We might as well bottom out, try and get one of these top picks, and we're gonna be a good team next year when we have you know Lamelo back in the fold, Hayward back here healthy and you know whatever top pick we add because you know there is Victor Wimbanyama if they can get to that to that first selection but like even the the top of this draft looks very deep with yep. like the top players, six wins yeah the players that like fit like it, drafting one of those guys can be a, a pretty quick replacement for Miles Bridges athletic yep. forward uh some playmaking potential there uh and so those guys Scoot Henderson is, is maybe like a backcourt mate to LaMelo Ball um, especially if they decide to move on from from Rosier. So there are a lot of good fits for the Hornets. And like we've discussed, it would really benefit them to to tank out because it's not the year to be to be in the middle. No. And it the the move like that that I don't know how the league could the league can't do anything about it because it's like player player mm -hmm. health or whatever. But like what OKC's been doing when guys get a little hurt and they just shut them down for the rest of it, like <laughs> 
I'm curious if if the Hornets get into that. Like if Melo picks up an ankle strain, mm-hmm. in, another like another, like an ankle injury, let's say, in February, what and the, and the Hornets are a ten seed, let's say a nine or ten, ninth or tenth place. Do they just shut them down? Like that. Those are the things I'm I'm wondering. Mm-hmm. Um, I know what I would do. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, yo, you're you're done. You're done for the year. Uh, but yeah, I'm curious if they get into to, to that level of of tanking where you just start shutting dudes down. Um, yeah, or like what they did with like with Horford, just like oh, okay, see so you do with Horford. Like, oh, you're not playing this year. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's something they could do with, with Gordon. Maybe have him yeah. have him start the year and just like, okay, we're gonna sit you for the rest. We're not gonna risk any injury. Maybe even consider trades and stuff for you and. That'll be our way of, of kind of of racing to the bottom um, mm-hmm. in this this year. But man, I'm I'm so glad you were able to join me for this show. Uh, you brought some great insight, and you know, I once again want everyone to absolutely go check out everything you're doing. Go subscribe to the YouTube. Uh, make sure you're listening to the podcast because you're you're going to be right on top of all of this. If there's any hints or clues that we get, like of, of the Hornets tanking you'll be right there covering it. And like those, those videos from you coming out quick, man. So like, oh, I appreciate the work you do. Oh, uh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Anytime, anytime. Um, I actually added a, uh, on YouTube, you can add like custom emojis. Mm-hmm. Like, so I have like a Lamella one. I have like a Eric, like a couple of Eric Collins calls. Like, how do you do oh, yeah. oh, yeah. that stuff? I added a tank one. <laughs> I, added, I added a tank emoji for this, especially for this season. So I'm here for it, man. I'm here for the long haul. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I- I'm going to give you the floor one last time to, to, yeah. to just, you know, once again, let people know where they can find all of your work um, and so we can wrap this show up. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Uh, name Sam Dracula. Um, YouTube.com slash Sam Dracula. Um, on socials, it's S-X-M-D-R-X-E. Sam Drac, X's instead of A's. But yeah, all, you can find all that on my YouTube uh, podcast is Believe in Hornets. It's every single week, everywhere podcasts are found. Um, myself and Raymond Felton. Uh, talking Hornets and NBA stuff and some college stuff, you know, when, when that, when that time of year comes around, cause I, I don't stay, I don't stay too plugged in on the college stuff, but when tournament time mm-hmm. comes, that's when I start like, you know, who, who don't need to be watching out for. So he's an expert in that field for sure as well, mm-hmm. as well as the NBA while uh, having a, won, won a national title. So yeah. Uh, Sam Dracula on our YouTube and believe in Hornets podcast everywhere. Podcasts are found. Yeah. And once again, all of, all of those links will be in the description, either the YouTube or podcast version of this episode. So race down to that description, go click all those links and and, and hit subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, once again, thank you to Sam. Thank you to the viewers, listeners of this podcast, Highlight Basketball Podcast. I'm going to be definitely be trying to do this weekly with with various guests of, of other teams. So if you have thoughts on who you who may want to see or a team you want covered in future episodes, definitely at me with with those. Um, Thank you all for listening and enjoy the rest of your day.